Okay, we're ready. Hello and welcome, Russia. We can't <laughs> hear you. Your microphone is muted. Oh, yeah. So they can't, they, we can't hear them, but they can hear us. Денис, а звук идет, нет? Yeah, now we can hear them. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we can start immediately? Yes, we can start. We are ready. Hello from okay. Slavin. Hello um, from, from me. My name is Reinhard Marx. I'm a teacher from Germany. And um, at the Realschule in Sunder, a kind of secondary school where we teach children aged 10 to 17 years. Um, um, I've been globally uh, connected teaching for about 10 years now, and I did a lot of projects I got honored for by the European e Twinning Commission or from, from National Geographic. The session today will be recorded and presented at a live stream in the internet. So we welcome all teachers from abroad and from our friends all over the world. So uh, we would like to share the screen with you to start the presentation. Uh, are you sharing a slide out? Yeah, try to do my very best. So, yes. So, I hope everyone can see this. Uh, being globally connected means to meet a lot of teachers and students. Due to the teachers, some of one are my co-presenters today. It is a whole bunch of teachers from around the world covering all ages of students and all levels of English learning from kindergarten to high school students and adults from beginners to advanced learners. I would like to ask my colleagues below the main screen to introduce themselves from the left to the right as it appears on the sub screen. Okay. okay. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Maria Colusa from Argentina. I've been teaching English for 20 years. I'm currently teaching freelance from home. Uh, mostly to adults, and I've been connected for uh, three years and doing a lot of learning from my friends here in the room. Thank you. And Arisa? Uh, hello, I'm uh, from the eastern Siberia. I'm from um, Big settlement in Krasnoyarsk territory, and I'm an English teacher of a secondary school. I teach students from 8 till uh, 18 years old and I uh, collaborate with um, uh, teachers around the world since 2007. Nice to meet you. Greetings. And then Mike and Anna. Well, we are basically also from Siberia, we are from the city of Krasnoyarsk, but we also work in the area and we, we, we teach at the university, Siberian Federal University, both of us. I teach English. I teach philosophy and technology. And we both are teachers at a local um, center of additional education for uh, children uh, that is located in a small rural uh, town, Uzhur. Uh, so we have both experience and 
Okay, and Anne? Uh, good day everyone from Australia. I'm a teacher in a small country school in South Western Australia. We are a prep to year 12 school. So I have taught 5 year olds to 18 year olds computer studies and commerce. Lovely to meet you. And I'm Steve from Cape Town in South Africa. And I am an educator. I teach about 4,500 students a week in schools around Cape Town. And I also teach a lot of classes around the world. And uh, I'm delighted to meet all of you. So when it's up to me again, and I would like to go on. Just wait, yes, like this. To share my presentation. Yes, yes. It should work. It should work. Are you on share screen? I'm on share screen, but it doesn't work. The icon doesn't work. Oh. Sorry. Um. What have I done? Would you like me to try? Let's see if I can find the presentation. No, I just open. I just have the toolbox open on the right, and I can't can't close it. Is this working? Yes, it's, it, it, it is working, yes. Perfectly. Thanks. If I push present. Yes. You are an angel. OK, <laughs> so I, I don't know what else is going to be featured on the screen. I can only see the presentation. OK. So you must just tell me when you want the next slide. OK, I think we must do it like that. OK, uh, we go on with slide number three. <coughs> Sorry, we can't see the presentation. You can't see the presentation. They must click on my on my image. Ah, yeah. So now you can see me, but not the presentation. No, we can't see the presentation. Just a moment. Oh. Uh, Steve, can, can I try it again? OK, sure. It doesn't work. It is really terrible. <laughs> And I don't know why. It was working all the time. So, so why not? Maybe if you log out and log in again. Okay, so so right out, are you going to try and log out and then log back in again? Yes, what we, I think would be the best. See you soon. Okay, all right. So welcome to technology. These things tend to happen. But I think uh, we'll find a, an innovative way to solve the problem. We have Reinhard back. And let's see if he can load the presentation. Perfectly. Okay. 
We can, okay. hear, okay. Okay. we can hear you and we can see you, but we can't see the presentation. It, it'll be on Reinhardt's picture. Right. You have to click on his picture. Okay, I hope you can see the presentation. No. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes, now we so can see the oh, <laughs> <that's> perfect. <laughs> um, next to our presentation, which runs a little with difficulties, uh, we prepare a question paper, a text document at Google, which is open to everybody now. We would like to invite you to come into this presentation and ask further questions. You can use your internet connected mobile phone during this conference already to drop us a line. This document will be opened until Saturday this week and we will answer your questions throughout the next days. We can additionally add some links about topics we will present during this meeting. During this meeting. Just type in Just type in this link this in your mobile and you get access to that paper immediately, hopefully. After you log in at your Google account, that means you need a Google account. Mm -hmm. uh, this link of the question paper will appear uh, as several the slides during this conference. So this link is bit.li slash one, a small l, and then four i, and a great u, q, u. So it, if you have a Google account, you will be there. If you have no opportunity to type in that letters into your mobile phone, you can also use this QR code on the, top, on the bottom of the right side to, um, to, to reach it. OK. Um, to offer a global connected learning to your students and to yourself as well means to open your classroom window to the world. You and your students will be able to get to know different cultures, especially traditions and languages. And your partner will take a look into your classroom, would like to know something about Russia, Russian traditions and language. Your students will know about others, keep different nationalities around you. They are proud to tell others about your school, your city, your region and your country of course. They become ambassadors on one hand and learn to accept different cultures on the other hand. Learning to accept cultural diversities, they practice their English language skills discussing what to say and how to express it in advance. Due to the age of students, Different skills are trained on different levels. These were some benefits students already have. Um, so the students are really motivated to become a global citizen, meet people from around the world, become paired. So you can set up new projects in your English language lesson and the students are highly motivated to go on learning English. Mostly all students are engaged, even the most shy and struggling ones. They improve their communication skills and their learning outcome are achieved faster. There are also some benefits for you as a teacher. Offering a globally connected learning environment to the students make it necessary to think about new tools you can use in your classroom. Some of these are known as web dot zero tools, but there are much more opportunities you can use setting up new tools for your students. The problem is that you are usually unfamiliar with all that tools if you are an absolute beginner. But getting connected with other teachers give you the benefit to learn from them, to try out certain tools for your lessons with your teaching partner and discuss its value for your English lessons. So you enrich your personal learning as well by creating a new network and get some more connected personally to your teacher partners. There are some general aspects why you and your students 
should get globally connected, it is obvious that certain benefits will be focused throughout the introduction of different projects at this conference meeting. That means your my partners, my co-presenters today will uh, present certain projects they have done during their globally connected learning and I think they will point out the benefits um, their project has to the students and to the teachers. Again, you see on the top right the link for the question paper. How can you do globally connected learning? You can do it by reading. Um, that's one opportunity. Uh, every first March in each year, there is a World Read Aloud Day. That is a project where you can read stories with your partner classes from around the world in English. It's all. Uh, it will be done this year as well. So still time enough to um, to search for a partner and to join this World Read Aloud Day this year. You can do your globally connected learning by writing. That means you can, for example, create a scrapbook, um, a, a book where you create or your students will create half of the pages and then you send your book to your partner class and you get the opposite from your partner class back and they create the uh, other half of the book so you will uh, finally have one book for yourself and for your students and your partner class will have one book for the students. We know um, a lot of books um, traveling around the world where a lot of students print and color pages in English, print in English and color the pages um, and send it back a very very nice um, idea you can see on the top right side. Um, you can um, uh, you can work or learn by drawing um, as many um, teachers do uh, by Chinker um, that a little I think it's a cat on the uh, um, left below and it is the cat from scratch and all ICT teachers among you know that hopefully it is an opportunity to create pictures by um, by your computers and students can um, create certain pictures can work on the same platform to create uh, common pictures about a certain topic you can use email of course to, to exchange some information among the students groups and of course you can uh, sing and that is what I uh, for example have done uh, two years ago and maybe we have some time to talk about later on. You can do it as a mystery that is something I think you do not know. Uh, a mystery um, is something that uh, is a connection, a video connection you can use um, to find out where your partners live, that is something you usually do at the beginning of a project um, to find out yeah, who, where they live and that is something you can do with uh, beginners already because you only need to have low level skills and the others, your partners, are only allowed to answer with yes or no. Uh, you cannot find out the local uh, um, the location where your partner is. You can also do a mystery counting, and that is something uh, Steve sometimes do. To maybe he can point out a little to it later to find out a special a certain uh, number you have in mind. So the other have to find out that number. You can organize discussion groups, which offers you for a, a, a lot of opportunities, especially for older children. Uh, project I have done, especially because I'm not an English teacher, but I'm a teacher for mathematics and natural science and a teacher for media. So what I always do is to invite experts to my classroom. And these experts uh, are very different. Uh, on the, um, on the um, 
picture on the left, you see Joe Kerr, a paleo-oceanographer from the University of Cambridge. She was talking about oceans and climate to my eighth grade students and about the relation, um, how oceans impact our climate and how the climate impact the ocean and how uh, um, global climate will change uh, the um, coming years. On the right side, you see a project which has actually finished last week. It is a penguin project with the um, American Ministry of uh, yes Ministry of Research, and this is a project done in the Antarctic region, where this uh, lady, uh, Mrs. Uh, Jean Pennycook, and her partner is. Um, researching about the behavior of penguins and my, uh, my students get the opportunity to observe one, one nest and chick chicks of one couple and they paint a flag and this flag was sent to the Antarctic. It was waving, you can see it on the um, right below picture, was waving in the Antarctic over Christmas and sent back and now this flag is in my classroom and uh, is a symbol of a good collaboration. But last week they had a video conference with uh, Mrs. Penny Cook and they had the opportunity to ask a lot of questions about penguins, about their behavior and why penguins are a bio-indicator for climate change. Um, these experts must not only be real experts. So if you have to teach a topic, um, a grammar topic in Germany, for example, it's always connected uh, to a certain uh, topic like Australia or England or the United States or whatever. So sometimes you have the opportunity to get connected to, let's say, a teacher from that region. And this teacher can be, for example, an expert to you as well. And the, uh, and the students can ask questions to this expert. And I think uh, everyone will be happy to answer your questions um, about your country or about the region where you live. The other opportunity is that your students become experts about what they have learned. That is what I have done, for example. Um, here with my class seven, uh, and they had to share information about how people from German islands get their drinking water from. And that is something uh, what was very unique at our school, so they have to, uh, to choose among a German island and share the information they found out about the drinking water quality with some teachers who are themselves islanders. And uh, after the presentation, about eight German islands, these three islanders had the opportunity to tell the German students uh, about their islands and how they get their drinking water and where they get it from. Um, so, very good idea. It was a video conference. Uh, we uh, have collaborations with institutions like the Sally Ride uh, Foundation. Sally Ride was the first female American who uh, visited the International Space Station. So we have the opportunity uh, to take uh, photos from the ISS from the surface of the Earth. And um, we do this to support uh, our geography lessons. And uh, you see on the right uh, side that picture that is the Greek island of Corfu in the Mediterranean Sea. So you get sometimes excellent photos where you can uh, do some researches for your uh, geography lessons. Um, what you also can do is some collaboration between different classes. 
So you can see on this picture, uh, we did on the left a, a so-called padlet, that is a kind of pin board where students can uh, fix some first information about them. This pin board is a German pin board with a clause in Finland. And it was the first step they did to get into connection to just uh, fix some information about who they are, how old they are, and um, what their hobbies are. And the, we used this uh, pin board and this information to pair them, the teachers pair them afterwards into uh, certain groups to work, to, to work on later. Yes, and we had a video conference always. You can see it on the right side. Um, that was the second step to meet each other and to say hello and to introduce both groups to the, uh, to the, to, to the project. Yes, and that is something very unique we did. Um, I don't know. Uh, yes, um, I kept in mind to present a very, very famous Russian folk song. In English, it's called Inscription of Hope. And um, I don't know if, how far you're familiar with that song. It is a um, very famous or, or is a sad folk song, and the um, lyrics were found in a German cellar during the Second World War, written by Jewish people. And the composer of this uh, song is an American. So we coupled three classes, from one from America, one from Germany, and one from Russia. So Russia is on the top in the middle, the German on the bottom left, and the American on the bottom right. And we all sang this song and created a special song with um, with in German a trilingual song in German, Russian, and in English, and uh, put it into one into one record. So uh, and t took a video from that all and sent it all to the composer who gave us permission to do that. So that was a very unique project you can possibly do your lessons. Yes, and that is not my, that was my project, a little, a little uh, choose from a lot of projects I do at my school, I arrange at my school for other teachers, and this project is for, uh, from Anne, and I would like to ask Anne to go on to, yes, introduce some projects you have done, please. Thank you, Reinhardt. Um, I teach in South Western Australia, so if you look at the pin on the map of Australia, you should be able to see where our school is located. We are a small rural school, so I live on a farm, so you can see me feeding our pet lambs. Um, my computer lab is shown in the top right corner, and if you look at the students um, in the green paddocks, that's the back gate of our school. So we are very, very rural. So Reinhard, could you pass to the next one? We do yeah. not have we do okay, not no have problem. mobile Thanks. We don't have any mobile phone service at our school, but our students do have a laptop uh, per student from grade five to year twelve. Here's some examples of us connecting in real time. So the younger students have a book character dress up day. So we did a virtual parade for the students in Taiwan. They had to guess which book character they were, and then they shared whether they knew the book or were interested in learning more about the book. We were doing an International Dot Day project. We didn't have the book in the library. So the top middle photo shows a teacher in Thailand reading us the book so that we could still be part of the project. Um, I've spoken to students in India on International Children's Day and they've spoken to me what it means to them to have a special day for them. The middle lower photo shows a boy who's really interested in American history but he doesn't learn it at school. He goes online at night time, teaches himself and he was able to talk with an American teacher and learn more about 
um, the American history that he was interested in. And lower right corner shows Lorraine Leo from the USA helping my students solve problems in the programming language Scratch using an iPad. Next slide, please, Reinhardt. Uh, this just shows you some snapshots of why we've connected and how we've connected. And I think we've lost Reinhardt, the, my presentation. So Maria, you may need to mute your mic. Anyway, I shall go through it even though you may not see the photos. Students love to connect with students. They really enjoy talking, learning the language, hearing the accents. If they don't understand each other, they will mime, chat, do everything they can to understand. So Tatiana, who's in the room now, we connected with, I connected with her students for International Peace Day, which is not very big in Australia because we, don't, we are a peaceful country. So I loved, some of those students on the laptops were beamed in from their homes. So the teacher connected on Skype with them and then they were able to actually be part of the presentation even though they weren't at school. Students in Indonesia cooked food for us and demonstrated the ingredients. They would ask what the English name of the ingredient was because English was their third or fourth language we would say that picture up in the top right is actually bean shoots. Another picture there shows link ups with schools in Russia where students did traditional dances, showed their babushka dolls, um, showed their artwork, etc. We teach Mandarin Chinese as our second language. So the last photo, lower right, shows a girl um, teaching us how to fold paper money for Chinese weddings. Next, please, Reinhardt. But the real value in learning comes and we can discuss with students from the country they're in topics that are important to us. So that should read, should Australia go to India to play sport? We had a lot of racism um, attitudes in Victoria. There was a lot of talk about us not going to India because uh, there have been some um, scenes of tension, etc. So we got online and debated with the American School of Bombay should we go? So we used Google Documents, we used Skype to see each other and Google Documents to divide the students in mixed groups to discuss it. Next please. So these are just some sample questions when it comes up on your screen. So each group had two different questions to debate, then they came back in Skype and summarised their findings. Uh, next. So my students have done a lot of global collaboration over the last six or seven years and this was a project where our students worked on a Moodle which is like a learning network and the students were able to talk to each other and discuss um, in forums on that Moodle. And this girl in Japan actually asked one of my girls whether she would then help her with her English because she made lots of mistakes. So we Flick had actually left school, so if you go to the next slide, Chloe actually answered the, fixed up her English for her, but Chloe didn't know what the Opacan was, so she needed to know that and she gave us some reflections on her writing. So I think the best learning comes when students teach each other and work together like that. Next. Um, the students themselves would say why um, it's important to learn a foreign language and what's the best way for them to learn. So if you have time to read those quotes, the students are saying their favourite ways of learning and it kept coming back. They want to talk with each other in the other countries and learn that way. Next slide. This was a classroom that blended many countries. So we had Japan, the United States and Australia all in the one virtual classroom, a little bit like this hangout. But we not only had students and teachers, we had an 87 year old grandma and parents from Australia and Japan in the one classroom. And my students were able to present topics that they were passionate about to that group. Next slide. Why? Why should we even bother doing this? So we need the next slide. 
the students answer it themselves. There's no better way to learn from your peers. Using a virtual classroom and talking to them is far more interesting and valuable than any textbook. But they do feel weird about it. So, next slide just shows you a summary. There's a global education conference. Uh, just the next slide, please. A global education conference takes place every year. And those who are at the conference put all their reasons on that slide why global education is important. So I will try and add that to that Google document or that um, HTTP link that you see on most of the slides. Just quickly, next slide, shows you my favourite tools for collaborating and global connections. So I've put those and a link to the resources on my on that Google document as well. And if you go to the next slide, this is where I have found connections. So again, if you if you have a look at that, there's lots of sites around the world where you can go and join. But my favourite ones are Skype and Skype groups, Classroom 2.0 Twitter and the Global Ed Conference. Okay, thank you everyone for listening and please have a go at connecting globally. It's amazing. Thank you, Reinhardt. Yes, thank you, Anne, and um, I hope everybody can still see the presentation. Uh, we go on with Steve. Hello, South Africa. <laughs> Hello there. Okay, so I've only got one slide and I'll try and keep it nice and simple. Um, I, I honestly believe that using the internet to collaborate globally has so many wonderful opportunities for, for participation, but it's also about sharing. So if you take a look at the top left-hand corner, you will see that we recently hosted a, a NASA scientist at our local science center. And if you look very carefully, you might be able to see a laptop just in front of him and what we did was we arranged a Google Hangout and invited schools from over 12 different countries to join in while he was giving his presentation and that enables everyone to share excellent speakers and wonderful events no matter where they are in the world at no cost to them. In fact on Wednesday evening I have an expert from Japan on the Soroban which is the Japanese abacus and I will certainly be sharing that link as well. We will be doing a Google Hangout and you're welcome to join in, watch the talk and, and even ask questions about it. Um, I was also recently asked to, to take part in a celebration. It was a, whoops, <laughs> it was a 24 hour celebration um, of global events and different people was slotted in at different time zones to take part and I was very fortunate that uh, I got a chance to to be a part of that and I arranged with a group of students to join in with me so that at least when they look through the 24 hours of footage of global collaboration they can see how simple it is to connect with all parts of the world at no extra cost to them. Um, if you look a little bit lower down, it says teacher workshops in Johannesburg. Um, you can just imagine that when you are teaching several thousand students a week, my schedule is quite busy. And sometimes I get asked to run workshops in different parts of the country. And for me to take a whole day off for a two hour workshop is, is not always practical or, or cost effective. So I've now started offering the opportunity for them to do it through the internet. And we did a test run last year and it was so successful that now every year we are running our workshops over the internet in different provinces and it just means that uh, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Um, the other thing that I feel as an educator is that if you want to teach something, you've got to make the subject matter come alive. And I can teach you about space, but because I've never really been there, because I'm not someone who is an expert on it, it doesn't always make the subject matter authentic. It just means the kids are learning from what I have to say. So 
I believe in, in hearing it from the horse's mouth. So uh, a colleague of mine who is an astronaut, um, I arranged for him to chat to my daughter's class and you can see on the bottom there is an image of um, the astronaut talking on one screen and we had a projector on the other screen showing his presentation. So I was able to advance the slides while he was speaking and the children got to benefit from um, asking him questions and learning more about space through a real astronaut. Um, every Tuesday I run one of my regular classes but as a, a, an experiment I also open it up to anyone in the world that would like to join. So once again today at 2.30 South African time, you are welcome to join our live feed and we do brain teasers and problem solving and generally it's a lot of fun but we have schools from around the country and around the world who join us in the mornings uh, in America and uh, I think in Russia it will probably be in the, in the afternoon for you. Um, and then just below that, something that's very special for me is that, you know, in South Africa we have um, a lot of poverty and one of our goals is obviously to do outreach work and to, to work with uh, kids from disadvantaged communities and there is no greater joy than sharing the internet, something that many of these kids have never ever used before. They don't know what email is, they don't know what Skype or Google Hangout is and here they get an opportunity to speak to children their own age and ask them questions, find out what sort of music they like. It really does bring the world into your classroom. So there are so many other projects that, that, that we do. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't want to go and put 20 or 30 slides down because I think that uh, the most important thing I can say to you as educators is you need to dip your toes in the water. and I'm, I would be delighted if any of you would like me to chat to your students in your classroom, if you'd like me to try and connect you with, with someone, I'd be very delighted to, to just get those toes wet because once you get involved, the <laughs> excitement will grow and it becomes very addictive. So addictive that if you ever joined our channel, you would know that it is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days teachers from all over the world, there's non-stop chatter all the time. So there's always someone to talk to, there's always someone to share ideas with, there's just so much going on that you're never alone. And I think that as a teacher, it's nice to know that you're never alone and that you've always got a little helper somewhere along in the world that will jump in and gladly assist you. So I thank you very much for your time and I hope that you found that useful. Thank you very much, Steve. I will get on <coughs> with the next one. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, please, can somebody unmute me? Because we can hear you. Yeah, we yeah. can hear okay. you. Okay. All right. So. Um, um, thank you, Steve, for some such beautiful words. I, I experienced that uh, from my humble classroom here in Argentina. Uh, what I wanted uh, to say to you was that uh, basically you have to start by doing little things, um, start practicing with your friends, probably somebody whom you trust, because that's what happened to me. I joined this community of educators and then I realized that I was not alone and uh, for a teacher it's necessary and for a student is, it's only natural, you know, if they pay us to teach them English and there are so many students out there who are, who are also learning, it's only logical or it's natural or it makes sense to, for us to create opportunities for them to uh, go out there and, and interact in English and express themselves and, and their uniqueness in English. Um, but basically it's, it begins with you trying to uh, 
uh, reach out uh, to the world and connect with other like-minded people and, and, and you have to ask for help. That's why I think it's important for you to uh, join a community. Uh, if, if it's not us, which is the Hello Little World group, uh, any community uh, of educators who are basically interested in what you are doing. Um, and I wrote there at the very end, you have to enjoy the ride because that, that's basically what we are all doing. Otherwise, the, we wouldn't be here. I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, to be here with you and, and I do this for the fun of it. Um, so that's that's what I wanted to 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 tell you at the beginning. Uh, we know we are all learners here, and that if if we are we don't know something, we just have to go out and ask, and somebody hopefully will answer. And and that's the that's priceless, yes, for us as teachers because we are all learners with our students. Uh, so please, can you turn on the next slide, please? And here's what I did um, last year with my students. I teach adults. Um, so we basically Skyped with other students and teachers. There you can see Anne, whom you just heard before Steve. Um, uh, the first one is a girl from a company who needed to brush up her English. Um, we joined uh, with another class of adults in Greece, and that's who's talking to her is uh, another person who worked in a company and needed to practice his English too. Then um, Anne, the, in the second picture, is talking with a, with a student, with one of my adult students who was hoping to visit Australia. And so she gave uh, her some tips about what to, where to go and, and the Australian way of life. Um, and then it's my daughter practicing with some students, but in the fourth um, picture, you can see me talking uh, to a class of young learners. That's what I do uh, on a regular basis. I often collaborate with teachers who uh, need uh, help or who need an audience because it's basically for our students to know that there is someone out there listening because in this way they they perform if they know that is someone is listening to them they work better they make an effort <laughs> that's that's for sure believe me I I've experienced that and that's what all my my other teacher friends are saying yes because there's someone out there who is not their teacher or their or their friends and they have to you know they have to pay attention to how they perform, and that's, that's better, that's a good thing. Uh, you can also see an example of a Padlet wall, which is very um, a very good thing to have because it allows for collaboration. In this Padlet wall, wall we just uh, ask them to uh, share pictures of their favorite places uh, in their town and to, to write a brief description of the place. Um, we decided to go for this because um, there was a six-hour time lapse between our, our, our countries and this was an asynchronous way of putting things together. Um, below I, I embedded a link to uh, some notes I, and suggestions as regards uh, teaching adults if, if one of you, if people in the audience um, are interested in teaching adults, you can contact me and, and add your comments there in that document. Uh, well, that's about it for me and greetings from Argentina and we hope to see more of Russia here in the virtual world. Thank you so far. Maria, thanks to Argentina, and we have some further projects, very interesting projects, and we switch again to Russia, and Mike, and uh, Anna, it's up to you. Michael, where are you?
mic your microphone. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Do you hear uh, us? Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Excuse me. Excuse me, can you hear us? Good. Good. Fine. <laughs> well, we got struggling with the mouth. So, uh, we're happy to present here. And uh, we are teachers from Croatia. Yeah, the boat. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We both teach at Siberian Federal University, which is in Krasnoyarsk, and we also have uh, the project, uh, again, we also have the project at, at the World School, so we have both experience with university students and school children. And uh, well, but we are not going to tell you about all the projects uh, uh, we were involved in, because there is plenty of projects. And we would like to focus on one For us, it's very important to connect school and university education. That's why we wanted to share an example of our project. We are school children from a rural town in Siberia. From a small town in Siberia, connected to Chinese students who share some information using different means of knowledge. And those students, they were actually from college. They were from the pedagogical university. Uh, our project started when we uh, wanted to find some collaborative um, uh, part of our partners, some partners for collaboration, and we posted um, a proposal, project proposal, uh, in the Skype, uh, in the classroom social network. Uh, it's a very interesting professional social network uh, where you can suggest your own projects and you can. Uh, find people to collaborate with. Uh, and we got one response uh, from a Japanese lecturer uh, who wanted to have international experience too. Actually, actually, it was the uh, English woman who was working in, uh, I, I think maybe she's still working in Japan, teaching English there. Very interesting. Um, sorry. Uh, so, so uh, why? We, Decided to have a web webinar. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. I have the slides from Larissa. Hello. From you at the moment. Yeah. Yes. So maybe sorry, but maybe we can ask oh, Larissa to go on. Sorry about so that. I can't change the sequence of the slide now. Oh, okay. sorry, okay. sorry. That's no just problem. You oh, it was my fault. Yes. Sorry. It was we, my you fault. invited us. The, okay. Larissa, it's up to you. Okay. We, okay. We can wait. Sorry for sure, that. Sure. We can continue later. Um, do you hear me? Y yes. So, shall I start? Yeah. Okay, I'd like to share my experience in global collaboration with schools around the world. My idea is to help my students to become global citizens who can be tolerant and respectful to people uh, of different cultures and religions. I'd like to help them to open their eyes on the world. So I engage my students uh, starting this primary school. We Skype with classes from different countries uh, and my students like to sing uh, songs uh, to their peers. They talk about their favorite toys, food, activities, and so on. But the most favorite activity is exchanging puzzles, uh, Christmas cards, letters, uh, books, and toys. Uh, like they appear, the broad creates a real-life situation for using their knowledge of English. And sure, it motivates children to study English. And 
uh, next slide, please. And middle school students are involved uh, in many global projects too. One of the school around the world. Uh, I should like to add about my school a bit. Our school is a pilot one in implementing a uh, new state, federal state education in a secondary school in Krasnoyar State. So I have uh, some elective courses uh, for teenagers. Um, so we began interviewing uh, students and teachers from different countries uh, about uh, hobbies and schools and compare them with our school. Uh, we use Skype conference, uh, we use uh, such technologies as uh, exchanges, PowerPoint presentations and videos. Uh, Hello Little World group of teachers became our partners. Now we have uh, rich materials about schools uh, uh, to study and share and we still continue doing our projects. It's so wonderful to have so mates in every part of the world. Uh, uh, next slide please. Uh, my students have been participating in global projects uh, since 2007. We started with Kidlin projects. Uh, and since last year, I work as a board member of Kidlin. Uh, you can find here a lot of interesting projects for your students of different uh, ages, like drawing pictures for their partners, creating poems, or even discovering landmarks of the world. And Mark Games um, uh, is coordinated by the professor of Western Illinois University, Mr. Terry Smith. And um, every year about um, 90 teams from uh, 14, 15 countries participate in the projects. Uh, by the way, this project is starting this week and you can join. Uh, last November, I was a co-presenter uh, with Mr. Smith uh, in a postal presentation in Seattle. Um, we presented this project. Uh, I also run a Kidlin Global newspaper with a group of my students of the seventh grade. And uh, please, next slide. Students write articles about their hobbies, sports, uh, about school news, customs, and traditions. And we also started such a category. Uh, can you turn uh, another slide? OK, thank you. And uh, my students interviewed some interesting people like photographers, uh, artist and uh, even the founder of the kid link and then they write articles uh, we have authors from the U uh, USA schools Spain and Russian we started this newspaper only in March uh, so if you like to uh, share your school news uh, you are welcome to join this project another project we are doing is uh, Doves for Peace projects. Mm, turn another slide, please. That project was started uh, by my student last year and it became famous. You can uh, see the geography of the project uh, on the map on the slide. Can you turn the slide, please? Uh, change the slide, please. Okay, thank you. My students wrote letters on the paper doves and um, every package uh, was packed with Russian flag and some symbols of Russia and some other Russian souvenirs. Uh, we have already got uh, a lot of replies um, from Indonesia, England, Sweden and uh, from some states of, uh, uh, from the USA and we got rains from Taiwan. Uh, the project um, will start in April through Kidlin.
and we will be happy to see you in the project too. I'd like to finish my presentation with uh, an admiration of this important event, uh, this conference. Thank my, uh, thanks my colleague Reinhardt for inviting me. I am happy to work uh, in this uh, global family of teachers. Uh, generously sharing experience, uh, collaborating and supporting each other. Uh, we can change the world for the better um, because we are together and that is the main thing. And everything we are doing is uh, for our students and our students are our future. Uh, best wishes to all and uh, thank you for the attention. So we got on with another little trouble to share my screen again, Steve, and I have the same situation like the beginning. Uh, Steve, you're muted. You, you can log off and then log back on again, and by that stage, Mike and Anna will be ready. Okay. Okay, so uh, just just give me a hint. Now, turn up. Do you hear us? Just give me the hint that you. Do you see us? I mean the video. I can hear. I can see you. Yes, but I now have to share the screen again. Okay, we go on. Can you see the screen? Well, we, we don't we don't see the presentation. If you click on Reinhardt's screen, no. you should see it. No, we, we can't, but it, it's probably well. We we don't uh, we don't see his. We probably have some uh, Our local problems. Local yeah. problem with the computer. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you hear us, we, we have only three slides in our presentation. Okay. And we were going to tell about the experience more. Uh, like Again, back to Russian Japanese project. Uh, well, Russian rural kids versus uh, Japanese students of the pedagogical uh, college. So, uh, for us, it, it's very important to connect uh, kids and school uh, from, from school, from a rural school, uh, with. Uh, students from a different country, and not simply students, but universities, schools, college students. And you should understand that for rural school, it's really, really sometimes it's really hard to find motivation for for uh, students to study English because they don't understand why why they need it. Uh, so we decided to um, have a collaborative project with this Japanese uh, college, and uh, the idea was to uh, discuss. Uh, some traditions and uh, customs from both countries. Uh, and the problem, uh, the biggest problem, was the time difference. Because uh, there in Japan they have uh, lessons only once or twice a week, and uh, we have a very intensive uh, summer session for our students, uh, where school children uh, have classes every day. That's why we decided to use uh, a synchronous uh, way of collaborating and of um, uh, sharing information. Yeah, that can be good to, to help uh, the problem of time difference, and this is very common. Uh, so, uh, the Japanese lecturer, uh, Claire, she um, had an idea, she suggested the idea of using uh, voice thread service. Uh, it's a very interesting website where you can share any kind of information. Uh, so uh, you can add video, you can add uh, text or pictures to this. Um, 
website and uh, people from any place in any country can, can leave their comments all to use in text, video or uh, audio messages. Yeah. And so uh, the first uh, the first stage students introduced uh, themselves they, uh, was, they were talking a little bit about themselves and uh, they got the comments on what uh, the interest hobbies like very personal uh, for each other audio comments and that was great that was great. Uh, it turned out that they had a similar interests they liked the same pop groups. So that was, that was great, actually, and they got really interested in the project. So it was the first, the initial stage of our project. Other students uh, had to learn something about uh, both groups, Russian and Japanese. And the second stage was creating something, creating something that can be shared. And uh, we decided that creating videos, making videos, uh, would be an interesting option and sharing and commenting on yes. videos uh, can be uh, highly motivating uh, for the students. When the students are ready, when students are showing something, they are very motivated. Yeah, I think every teacher of English uh, language uh, knows that acting and uh, dialogues is a very good way to uh, express uh, themselves. So uh, we chose the topic uh, of the different rules of polite behavior in different countries, which uh, appear to be turned out to be very interesting because we have different uh, etiquette rules. Uh, and our first video was from Russia, uh, and well, the second slide is if you can change it, uh, you can see uh, some pictures from this video. Uh, we tried to publish this video in, in the voice thread. Thread, but uh, we have some technical issues. This is very common when you are working with technology to have uh, technical problems, you see. And so you have to have a, a basically equivalent, you have to have different pro pro programs to use. Uh, and we tried to share it with the voice thread, we failed, so we decided to publish it on YouTube. We have um, uh, eight uh, short uh, examples of polite behavior in Russian. Uh, in Russia, and our students made this video very interesting, very emotional. Uh, the next stage was comment, uh, comments. Yeah, we got comments in audio comments from uh, from the students from Japan. So uh, that was like dialogue, you know, asynchronous dialogue. It was interesting. Uh, and uh, two weeks later, uh, the Japanese team also made several videos and they succeeded publishing them in voice thread. Uh, so we can comment uh, their videos from our side. And it was very interesting because Japanese uh, students from the university made videos for Russian school kids. Uh, our kids were really impressed. Impressed. Our students liked it. And when we were uh, we were showing those Japanese videos to our rural kids, we, we we were making we were recording that. So we were recording the feedback, the reactions, you know. Uh, and uh, well, uh, on the next slide, you can see uh, the uh, screenshots uh, of the videos from Japanese students. Uh, so the final stage of our project was. Uh, when Japanese students could see Russian uh, kids, Russian school kids watching their videos. And, uh, well, we decided that it was a very good uh, successful, success, successful example of motivating both school children and students to work together. And so, to study English, basically. And, well, they they knew some, some English words, they knew some English uh, phrases, and it was a good opportunity to, uh, to train, to motivate them to use this uh, knowledge. So, okay. and, communication, yeah. Uh, we think that such kind of communication, technology with communication can, can, can make a, a lot. Uh, and for us this project was different because we use some asynchronous uh, technology. So basically, usually it's just the talk in Skype or Google Hangout with the recording, but this like uh, video exchange with commands and the, with very personalized commands. I think this is something something we can all use. Uh, 
we believe that such small projects, uh, collaborative projects, they change education and they are making this world better. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, thank you for your attention. We hope that you will have a lot of interesting international projects with and, technology. And you will help each other in that. Okay. I think Reinhardt is just going to get his volume, his unmute his mic, so that he can see if he can finish off the presentation. Reinhardt, can you hear us? Okay, my 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 links, my uh, microphone was muted. So, if you are joining, uh, would like to join, or would you like to do such a global project, whatever. Uh, you, would you should ask your administration what to do, uh, what opportunities you have at school to do this, and you have to uh, f uh, read and find out opportunities, technical opportunities you have at your school and in the internet to set up such projects with uh, your children, and what oppor technical opportunities you have. Um, Finally, I would like to invite you again to join our question paper with the link on the top right. No, presentation should be the right one. You should uh, set up a hint, write us a comment or a question what to do. We all would appreciate to 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 add it these are some opportunities to get conducted globally by epels or e twinning which is uh, running in russia as well the global virtue classroom which is located in the us and the global classroom project from around the world and uh, we all we teachers we do the uh, presentation today are from the hello little word skypes group and uh, we give you a small overview about uh, how you get connected globally. If you need any link, send us a hint uh, or a, a question in, on the question paper. We will answer them. Yeah, that's the end of our, of our uh, presentation today. Thanks a lot that we get the opportunity to uh, present at the uh, Chelyabinsk University. I hope you have got a lot of inspiration for your English language lessons and uh, maybe we will welcome one or two or hopefully more teachers from the audience today and uh, yes at the end of the, pro the program today from this meeting thanks a lot on behalf of all presenters today thank you and greetings Russia bye bye